There are very few vineyard sites in the world that produce perfectly balanced grapes. Most vineyard sites produce grapes that actually require modification. So in the process of transforming them from grapes into wine, there is a series of modifications that take place. If you're going to make fine wine, you can't, you can't do any of those things. You just have to transform the grape into wine with a minimum intervention. When I came to the farm, I could see that there's a couple of problems which you find in conventional vineyards. We don't believe, like conventional farmers, that you must feed the vine. We believe that you feed the soil. Working with soil, you really start understanding how nature works. And if you understand how nature works, you can start controlling things in a biological way. The fact that we're, we're, we're not doing very much in terms of the actual winemaking process, and it's such a contrast to where I had been working before, where I spent a lot of time in the cellar um, adjusting and, and what you'd say making wine, whereas here it's very much a lot of time in the vineyard, um, observing the vineyard and, and looking after the, the soil. Our winemaking is very much sort of minimalistic, following the more old traditional ways of making wine. And I believe through doing that, you'll allow the farm and the vineyard site to speak through in the wine. Everything we do is to extract the juice, but also the character and the flavors and the tannins in the most delicate way. With biodynamic farming, the first thing you see is a lot of weed. They repair your soil, they keep your soil structure, they, they are home to all these microorganisms. So when you work with the soil like this and you build up the immune system of the plant, pests really stay away. We spend a lot of time getting the natural felt back. When you do that, you lose less tractors, there's less noise, there's more of the diversity of the natural plants. So what we found in the last three years is the increase in leopards, caracal, jackal, porcupines, and also some birds of prey. We've got chickens that lay eggs for the restaurant, also scratch in the soil, take out some of your vine weevil grubs, and also fertilize the soil. And I put the old horse bedding and the stable manure with the chickens. They aerate and fertilize it, and we make beautiful compost with that. The cows are mostly there for their dung. We only use female cows. There's a lot of calcium in her body, and that makes excellent preparations that we try and put into the compost. We've created an earthworm farm, and our compost and all of the refuge gets fed through the earthworm farm. To help the soil better, we want to move away from using tractors. So what we've done is we've uh, bought some Percheron horses. We use these horses in the vineyards to not uh, compact the soil so that there's no carbon emissions. And they work at about 3.8 kilometers an hour where a tractor works at four kilometers an hour in a vineyard. So you don't lose a lot of time. When you train horses, you must have the right temperament. So the horse trainers on Waterkloof are all Rastafarians. And I found that Rastafarians living so close to nature are ex exactly the type of people you need for training horses. Because the vine now looks after itself, it gives smaller bunches, smaller berries, but with thicker skins and more concentrated juice. And it is exactly that juice that the winemakers prefer to make wine from, and they make good quality wine from that. Grapes that are grown in as natural a way as possible make better wine. The byproduct of doing that is we have a wonderful atmosphere with, with animals and there's life back in the soil. These are all byproducts of our desire to make better wine. There's a direct experiment where, you, where I knew a vineyard for 10 years with conventional farming and I knew a vineyard with biodynamic farming and I saw the progression in the quality of the wine. I don't understand scientific principles and things like that, but I do understand what I put in my mouth. All our white grapes are whole bunch pressed. We don't destem the skins from the, from the stems. We chuck them into the press, we use gravity, so we don't have to pump the, the berries or the juice around. And from there, it will go into stainless steel tank. Because red grapes, there's two sides to it. The one is normally the Bordeaux cultivars. We do destem, so we remove the berries from the stems, but we don't crush the berries. The only difference maybe with our own varietals, we don't destem. We don't use any enzymes for settling, a bit of sulfur because you have to protect the juice and that's it. And from there we'll put it into tank or barrel and, and we leave it. We wait for the natural fermentation to start. Uh, we use a basket press, it's a very sort of old way, a traditional way of pressing red juice. It's a longer process but it's a lot more delicate, it's about a minimalistic philosophy. And everything we do is to extract the juice but also the character and the flavours and the tannins in the most delicate way possible. I want this to be a place where people take pleasure in visiting. 
both for the people who work here and the people who visit. We realised we were never going to get enough people here to fill this space for wine tasting and things like this. Coming from a restaurant family background, I'd always vowed I'd never go back into the restaurant business, you know. I changed my mind <laughs> and we have a restaurant. I fell in love, you know, with food, with the, the principle that you can just cook any ingredients and create new texture, create new flavors, create new combinations. But it's very important that the, the original product that you're treating, that you're going to deal with in the kitchen, has to be at its best. I start my day by just going up the farm. You, you see the vegetables, you pick up the eggs, and when I pick them up, they're still warm. You know, I have to remove the, literally the chicken to, to get the eggs. And we know where, where the product comes from, how it was grown, and, and when, when to pick it up. And when you arrive in the kitchen, you take, I usually take everything out, and I know what I have, the product that I have like left, what's coming from other suppliers, and, and that's how I create you know, the, the dishes. What I do is actually I choose the wine first, and then I will create the dish that goes with the wine. I don't try to make the dish and try to pair a wine with it. I, I go the other way, I work the other way around, because I, I can change the dish, but I can't change the wine. You'd be hard pressed to find wines of a similar style anywhere else. They have a wine that have, they're wines which have a real identity. We produce three ranges of wines. They have a different philosophy behind them. So what we wanted to do with Circumstance and make a range of wines that represent very specific sites in the vineyard and also specific grape varietals. It's about making wines that your circumstances allow you to make that really reflect a specific site. With Circle of Life, when we bought the farm, the soil was, was pretty much dead. There wasn't much of an ecosystem. And every year, as we've been farming the way we've been farming, we've seen this ecosystem develop. And that, to, to us, was a sign that what we've been doing on the farm in the soil has actually worked its way through the ecosystem. And we now have a circle of life on the farm. We wanted people that drink the wines to really connect to that. Being in the vineyard all the time, you really come a lot closer to nature. Another single varietal wine, which is called Vartoclough. It's the only wine that is called Vartoclough. It's our flagship wine. We only make that wine when we believe that particular grape variety is making something that is truly unique. And that was our objective when my father bought the farm, to make wines with a defining sense of origin. The vine itself is a fantastic symbol of renewal. Vines like live for, uh, 200, they can live for 200 years, vines. You can take a cutting from a vine and replant it and, and, and the life starts anew. And, and that vine can, can go on for millennia.